Hello, my dear family, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another great episode of Victory in Jesus. I am so excited. I am so delighted. I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed to be able to have you a part of my family as we, we call one another. We are, in fact, I don't just call you family, but we are family because anybody that loves the Lord, uh, they, they are considered family. You remember Jesus when he said in, uh, when, in the Gospels, he says, my family are those who seek to do the will of my father. I thank God for my blood family, and I thank God for my neighbors, but the, those, Jesus said, family are really those who seek to do the will of the Father. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of my family and allowing me to be a part of your family, for we both are a part of the family of Christ Jesus. So uh, we are thanking God for that on today. Now, uh, I want to uh, once again uh, say thank you, as I always like to do in the beginning of our broadcast, thank you for your words of encouragement, thank you for any way, any shape or form that you support this broadcast of Victory in Jesus. You know, some of you meet us in the marketplace and let us know uh, that you watch the program. Some of you let us know that you're praying for us. And, and every now and then, some of you will sow a seed, uh, a gift, of, a, a, a financial seed into the, to the broadcast. And I will say to you once again, whatever you sow into this broadcast by way of finances, I do not get it. I'll see it, but I'll make sure that it goes directly into uh, the, the, the Cable 12 studios here because, you know, it takes money. It takes money to, uh, to, to make a broadcast. It takes money to run this studio the way they do. So for Steve and Jamie and Kevin, they do an amazing job. They do a great job of making sure that we have the content that we have uh, each and every day. So and again, I know you're watching it because you're letting me know that you're watching it. So uh, you've heard the old saying, sometimes we need to put our money where our mouth is. So Thank you for, uh, and I, Kevin, if you would make sure that the address for the, uh, for the mailing address for Cable 12, it's on the screen. I want to be sure that you know exactly where to send your, your, your donations to so it'll be a blessing to the kingdom of God. So I haven't said that I want to make my way into where I want to get to today. You know, last time, if you were watching us last week, uh, we were talking, uh, we had uh, Pastor Brian Ratliff uh, talking about his book, uh, Coast to Coast, Spiritual Lessons from a Bicycle Seat. You know, we, we had an awesome broadcast, and as I, we were talking, and so many things that came to mind. I, I think I told him, it seemed like we, we sat down, and 10 minutes later, we were finishing. So uh, we didn't get to talk about a lot of the things that we wanted to talk about. You know, he's got the book coming out, and, and, and uh, you know, he wanted to share with us some of the lessons that he's learned. So what I did, I asked Pastor Brian if he would be willing to come back again this week and let's talk some more about uh, the book. We've had to range, rearrange our schedule to make sure that we could get this done, but it was so amazing. It was so awesome. It was so enlightening that I wanted Pastor Brian to come back. So guess what? Pastor Brian came back. So he's here mm. with us again today. Pastor Brian, thank mm. you so very much for mm. taking time out of your schedule. Mm. Be back with us once again uh, as we just really, uh, we're talking about your book, but mm -hmm. really we're just lifting up the name of Jesus. Absolutely, yeah. We well, said in his word, if I be lifted up, mm -hmm. I'll draw the whole world unto me. So Amen. again, thank you for joining in with us as we here at Cable 12 Studios lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, again, tell, let our family know just a little bit about you today before we get started. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, Pastor Frank, for allowing me to come back on the show, and it's good to, good to be here again. And uh, so my name is Brian Ratliff, and I've had the privilege of pastoring Clearbrook Baptist Church for, it'll be eight years this June. And uh, I, got, I became a believer when I was 16 years old at church camp, and um, instantly I just felt God's calling on ministry. And so I went to Bible college in Knoxville, and in my senior year of Bible college, Clearbrook Baptist Church got the crazy idea to ask me to come <laughs> be their pastor. So started there when I was 22, and this, this June will be eight years. Okay. And so we praise the Lord for it. Liberty? Uh, and I've been to Liberty with seminary. Okay, done yeah. all the seminary through Liberty University. Yeah, yeah so you, you're not a novice. Hmm. You look, you look like David, a young ruddy looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're ruddy, handsome looking. You look young and ruddy. Thank but you. now you've been, you've been seasoned enough. You've been in, you've been in ministry enough now, eight years, and you didn't just come out, but you, you took the time to study. I like that what Pastor Paul did. Mm -hmm. you know, he was, he was a very learned man, but he knew that because he was moving into a different aspect of, of, of you know, of his, of ministry, he took the time to study. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll say to any young Christian, any young minister. Any person that's trying to exceed, excel or exceed in God, you need to take some time to study. Absolutely. Prepare yourself so that you can be able to do what it is that, that you are endeavoring to do. So thank you for doing that. I think it's Amen. 
so important. And for a minister of the gospel, I'd say it's vital, it's critical that mm -hmm. you take some time to prepare your mind so that you'll be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. It's yeah. so important. I preached my first sermon when I was 16 years old, and trust me, I've come a long way since wow. then. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, but praise the Lord for all the opportunities he's given me. Yes, praise the Lord for that indeed. Well, Pastor Brian, uh, there, there, we've got some family here. Many of, you, many of our family members are, are longtime listeners, but every now and then someone uh, starts to watch it, or maybe they just didn't get to see the broadcast last week that, mm -hmm. you, they, that you were on, and uh, so they really don't know what you did, what amazing feat you just accomplished. So could you just kind of remind us? Absolutely. Of what, what, what happened? How did this all come about? Okay, so uh, several years ago, I was involved in, or a few years ago, involved in working out and uh, going to, I needed to get some cardio, and I didn't like to run at the time, so I went to some of the open gym basketball um, sessions in Roanoke, and I was just getting tired of getting elbowed and rolling my ankles and all the different stuff, so I decided I was going to buy a bicycle. So I went to Walmart, bought the nicest one there, then went to the bicycle shop, put some hybrid tires on the mountain bike, and um, started riding around town. And some of the church members, I would get together with some of my friends there, and we would go out and we would go on a little ride, you know, 10-mile ride, give or take. Um, and we just started talking one day, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we just rode across America? And so, long story short, we we planned that trip, and we presented it to all the different meetings in the church, and they voted 100% to, to do it. And, and it was a, a twofold purpose. The first purpose was to raise gospel awareness, so just to tell people about the Lord uh, Jesus and what He's done for us and how He died on the cross and rose again. And then the second purpose was to raise money for our building fund. And so we successfully completed that trip, and uh, we raised about $30,000 on that trip. And while I was on that trip, I had this epiphany that um, the Lord gave me to write a book about the trip. And so I'm in the publishing phases right now, in the second editing phase, hopefully later this year it'll come out and be published. We'll have a book, a book launch party and all this different stuff. But um, yeah, it's called Coast to Coast and the subtitle, Spiritual Lessons from a Bicycle Seat. Cool, cool. So that, uh, again, we'll be looking forward to seeing that later on this year. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that book will be coming out. And, and you were sharing with me uh, how you got caught in a storm and you know, how you were, yes. uh, many days you endured the pains of you know, riding a bicycle, or sitting on a seat for 100 miles a day, and then mm -hmm. having to go and preach a preach. sermon that night. Uh, that, that can be very challenging to say the least. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we, we cycled from San Diego, California to St. Augustine, Florida. We did it in 30 days, and we averaged about 100 miles a day. The shortest ride was 51 miles, Wow! and the longest ride was 151 miles. My goodness. <laughs> Thankfully, that 151 miles was in Louisiana, so it was flatter than a pancake. Flat, yeah. yeah. But, but anyways, um, yeah, so we rode 100 miles a day, and then we were involved in 15 different church services along the different way. Wow, wow. So, and I think we talked last time a little bit about uh, the success of that. You know, mm -hmm. it, you didn't just jump on a bike and decide to go. No, you had to uh, do some prior planning. You had yes. to, logistical-wise, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, I think you shared with us how you, know, you got declined by several churches who didn't mm -hmm. want any part of it, but then you were embraced by other churches. So, Absolutely. Uh, the planning part, you know, we, when we're talking about being successful, you know, that's a big, big part. You know, we've said many times, um, perhaps you've heard also, family, that, you know, success comes when preparation meets up with opportunity. Mm. So you, you prepared for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when the opportunity came along, you were able to capitalize on it because mm -hmm. you had taken the time to prepare for it. That's true. And again, logistical, uh, that's, you, you needed places to, 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 to rest. You needed mm -hmm. places where you could come into and share the love of Jesus. And, you know, you did that. So kudos to you for doing that because, yeah, you know, again, that's part of the, part of the process, planning. Mm -hmm. So now, I thought today, Pastor, we would talk a little bit further along those lines because, you know, we, we again, we ran out of time. We had so much to talk about. Mm -hmm. And this is so important. I think this is one of the most pivotal, the most critical uh, issues when it comes to success. And we, we, we're fooling ourselves if we do not consider this word called failure. Mm. You know, uh, many times, if you've, you've heard the story of the post-it note, uh, you know, it was a, it, the, the, the developer of post-it note, he was trying to create a permanent bond. Mm -hmm. But time after time, he, he fell short. So rather than just throwing this uh, stick his stuff away, he, he comes up with this idea of post-it note. He didn't create the 7-Up the same way. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the story goes that 
you know, it took seven times for the for the developer to get the right formula hmm. to become Seven Up, and hence the name Seven Up is supposedly where the name comes from. So, wow. so, so it, it lets us know that success doesn't doesn't come automatically. It does not come overnight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to fail your way to success. Wow, I like that. Oh, That's I like good. that also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fail yeah. your way to success. And you've got some lessons about failure I want you to share with our family today. Yeah, so we, we all, all 10 of us hopped into an RV in Roanoke and we drove all the way to California in an RV that one of the church members um, graciously and generously allowed us to use and he went along with us. We get out to San Diego into our, our park and the RV park that we were staying in and you know, we were really excited about the first day um, on June the 1st, 2015, and, and I couldn't sleep the night before, and so I was up about 5 a.m., and we wanted to get an early start before the sunrise to try to be in the cool of the day. And so we get to riding, and, and man, we were just having a good time. It was myself and then a young man named Greg and then our youth pastor, Brother Dave. We were the three riders at the time, and we went out on this, this ride. We were riding from San Diego, California to a town called El Centro, California. And um, along the way, um, I, I, I like to go to the health food store, and so I bought this organic sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to lather up, it was only just like water that came out. I was like, well, you know, I bought it from the health food store, so it's probably just liquid, watery um, sunscreen. So I lathered all over my arms, and the further I got in the day, the more I really realized that, man, I was, I was really red. <laughs> I was sunburned, so I forgot to shake the bottle. And then mm. halfway through the trip, you know, I get the sunscreen on, and man, I just began to get overheated and exhausted. We're about a hundred and up around 100 miles into our ride of 120 miles. Mm. First day, probably not the best idea to ride wow. that many the first day. And so we were riding along. We, we go up uh, out of San Diego on the big mountains, and we start zooming down. And I kid you not, it was about 80 degrees up top. And when we zoomed down, it was well over 100 degrees. We wow. called it the descent into hell wow. is what we called it. Wow. And so we were cruising along, and about 10 miles away from El Centro, I just, I was done. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep going. I felt like I was just going to pass out and die. Wow. And so I remember walking into the motor home and I guess I was looking pretty rough because every one of our team members, support team and cyclists, they looked at me and I could see defeat written all over their faces. Mm. And I, I could hear what they were thinking. They were thinking, Brian, if we can't finish the first day, how do you expect us to finish all 30 days? And so we drove the rest of the, the mileage uh, to the church and made it up the next day. But we went out and with the pastor and had dinner and stuff. And I got back and I took that aloe oil that, you know, the sunburnt stuff. And mm -hmm. I caked it all over my body. And man, I kid you not, as an answer to prayer, woke up the next day ready to rock and roll, as they say. Wow. And we made up the time. But anyways, that first day was the hardest day for me. And by God's grace, we persevered. We came through it. We made up the mileage and failure. This is what I like to say in the book. I said this, failure is not final. All right. Failure is not final. Mm -hmm. that's, that is, that's an awesome statement to make. It's much more than just those few words mm -hmm. that failure is not. And it's not because it is not. You know, failure really is a part of success. Mm -hmm. Anything that you're going to succeed at, it's almost, a, it, it's almost a guarantee that at some point you're going to fail along the way. Absolutely. The, even the Bible talks about, you know, I, I mentioned Joshua 1 and 8, mm. where uh, he did not fail. But also in Proverbs and Psalms, mm. the word says, a just mm. man yes. falls seven Sometimes. times. But it's not a period right there. That's right. It's a comma. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> he says, but he gets back up. Yes, sir. And does it again. So he gets up seven times to, to, to do it. So he, he can fall seven times, but he gets up eight. Mm -hmm. So as long as you are willing to get up, you are acknowledging the fact that failure is not final. Amen. I, that is so powerful. That is so awesome. So we have to be, if we're going to be successful in life, if, as you were on, the, on this coast to coast journey on the bicycle, we have to acknowledge the fact that failure is a part of success. And many of us, we won't, we won't succeed. We don't succeed 
simply because we are fear of mm. failure. Mm. You know, we learned at our church a long time ago that fear is the acronym for false evidence appearing real. Wow. And what the enemy does, he gives us false evidence appearing real in mm. hopes that we will accept that and then we will automatically fail when God says, mm. I have made you to be more than an overcomer. Mm. So we have to be certain that we don't give in to the false evidence when you got that, when you had the little issue with the heat, mm -hmm. you could have easily accepted fate as being, mm -hmm. you know, failure and then you would just packed it up and came on home. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, you said, no, failure is not final. And it mm -hmm. is not. Failure really prepares me for success. I heard someone say, failure is nothing more than success in action. Wow. Uh, and and I, I agree with that. It is success in mm. action. It is success being prepared mm. to come to the stage. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to say that because, you know, uh, we, if, we, if we do anything, mm -hmm. we're going to fail at something. You're right about that. That's just all there is to it. So accept the fact. Accept the fact that failure is a part of your success. Mm. Failure is a part of the journey. Failure actually builds character if you will allow it to. It does. And I'm sure you, you had a lot of character building experiences. You talked about the rainstorm that you got yes. caught in in the yes. book. And, you know, you could have easily just packed it in and went. But, <laughs> no, you hung in there. Yeah. You hung in there. I, you know, it's interesting. Failure over the years has just been has just been something that I've used as motivation and inspiration. Yeah. To where the more I don't succeed at something, the more I want to overcome that and succeed into that task. And so day one of all days... You know, it was that, that day we hit a brick wall. And, you know, by God's grace, we got out our hammers and we knocked that wall down. And we kept pushing on. Bit by bit, you mm -hmm. knocked that wall down. Yes, sir. And which that leads me to my next point here that I want to mm. make uh, because, you know, because you, you were able to succeed. Yeah, you, you accepted the fact that faith was part of it. But then one other thing that I think is important for us to, to do is we, is we have to take ownership. Take ownership of our own lives mm -hmm. and stop giving ourselves a get out of jail free pass. Mm -hmm. Again, you could have said, man, that would be something awesome to do. But no, you took ownership of it mm -hmm. because God had placed it upon your heart to do. Mm -hmm. You know, many times we would just make excuses. Bottom line, that's what I'm saying is we make excuses as to why not. When God has says to do it, we give excuses as to why not to do it. But somewhere along the way, we're going to have to take ownership, ownership mm -hmm. of our own lives, Absolutely. ownership of our own assignments and stop giving ourselves a get out of jail free pass. In yeah. other words, we have to be willing to embrace, we have to be willing to confront ourselves. Mm. Because if we don't confront ourselves, many times no one else will. Mm. No one knows the assignment that you have. No one knows the anointing or the giftings that you have as a born again believer in God. Mm. Uh, many times we know not ourselves mm. the gifts that we have. We just know that there is something on the inside of us that's telling us to go this way, mm. to do this thing. And mm. that's what you did, Pastor Brian. You, yeah. you, there was something on the inside of you was telling mm -hmm. you to do this. No doubt you may have said, man, now I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But you took ownership and you did not allow yourself to make excuses as to why not. Wow, that's really good. And, you know, I like to, to say it like this, that God calls us to give him ownership of our time, our talents, and our treasures. And when we give God ownership of our time, he's going to give us time to be used to further his kingdom. Yeah. When we give God our talents, whether it's, you know, an administrative skill, or whether it's a music ability, or it's a speaking ability, or, or whatever it is, God is going to give us the opportunities to use those talents for His glory. Mm -hmm. And then when we give God our treasures, when we give God, hey God, our bank account, this bank account is yours, this house, this car, all of it is yours, however you want me to use it, you direct me. And when we give God ownership of all that stuff, I believe that we'll see great success in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything you give to God, anything mm -hmm. you entrust unto God, God will give increase. Mm -hmm. Because we know, you know, like with Cain and Abel, God blessed Abel mm -hmm. because Abel gave him the first fruit. He gave him the best. That's right. And scripture is, 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 is filled with scriptures. Uh, Luke 6, 38, where mm -hmm. it comes to mind, give. Mm -hmm. And it shall be, be given, given good measure. Mm -hmm. Press down, shaking together, and running over. So mm -hmm. you're exactly right. You have to be willing <coughs> to, to give it, to trust it unto God. If you're going to mm -hmm. be successful in any area, that's the area. And I'm going to say this also because I found it to be true in my life. The area that you are most challenged in, 
the area that you're most attacked in, mm. that's a good indication that that's the area that you're most anointed for. Wow. That you're most gifted in because the enemy knows uh, that if you're gifted in a specific area, mm. he's going to attack that area first. Man, that's good preaching. That's good stuff. <laughs> it Keep is. Keep going right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we would stop in that area because mm. of the attacks are so hard. Mm. Ever wonder why he wouldn't attack you in this area mm -hmm. or another area? Mm -hmm. Where you, that area, you're perhaps not as strong in, you're weaker in that area, so he's not really going to put much of his forces on that mm. area. But if you are strong in your mind, guess what? He's going to try and send depression to you. If you're strong wow. in your body, he's going to try to send sickness to you. If wow. you're strong in your finances, he's going to try to send some kind of curse there, some kind of opposition there to block you, mm. to hinder you from 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 succeeding wow. in that area. Because if you can succeed in your area and I succeed in my area, then all hell's going to have to let go. Mm. Because the things that the enemy has holding are the things that God has gifted us to do mm. the best. I think I just got my sermon for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amen. Well, that's praise good. Praise God. Praise yes, God amen. for that. So, so that's why we have to take ownership. Stop, challenge mm. yourself. Challenge ourselves to do more because there is mm. more in us. Listen, we're going to be successful. I'm, uh, I have this problem every time, Brian. I run out of time. Mm. The clock is against me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, but if we, there's one more thing I want us to get to yeah. before we, about success because I. Uh, it, it parallels so well mm -hmm. with your book, you yeah. have a, a Successful Journey. If you're going to be successful, and this, you didn't tell me this, I heard this in your statement, you're going to have to surround yourself with quality people. That's right. I listened to who you said you brought with you. You didn't bring those who said you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. You brought along those who said we are more than capable of doing it. That's right. You, you, you have to have quality people mm -hmm. around you. And many of us, uh, you and I were talking earlier about this, this new thing called Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, we get so caught up in Facebook and Facebook has its place. It, there's some great things about Facebook. But if you look at Facebook long enough, you can see that there are many people on there who are pessimistic rather mm -hmm. than optimistic. You're right. Now, maybe they're in your lives so that you can encourage them to be more optimistic, but maybe they're in your lives as a distraction. Mm, wow, that's good. And we have to be certain that we really focus on the people that's going to help us mm. to get to where we to, to success, or the people that we can help along the way to success. And that, again, that's what you did when mm -hmm. you had your day one, when you had your, your when you hit the wall. You didn't meet, you didn't have people that said, we're going back home. Mm -hmm. No, you met with people who, who was able to help you That's right. to get, get your strength back. And then the next day you were ready to move forward in God. That's exactly right. And I'd like to take you back before we got on the trip. I went on my longest bike ride with a, a cyclist, a, a local cyclist in Roanoke. And um, his name was Reed. And I'll never forget uh, going out with him. He had the special shoes that, that install into the pedals mm -hmm. and, and all. I didn't have any of that stuff. I just had the bike. And so we rode from Roanoke to Eronto. And uh, it was about a 40-some, almost 50-mile ride. It was the longest ride I've ever d been on. And so we get back, and these, th this is the importance of surrounding yourself with quality people because he looked at me, and he said these words that still ring in my mind today. He said, Brian, be true to yourself. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And see, if I would have embarked on that cross-country ride that very day, I would have failed. And he was used by God to give me motivation, inspiration to get in better shape. Wow. And wow. so that's the importance of having men and women in our life that's going to sharpen us. The Bible says in Proverbs, iron sharpens iron. Yes. And that's what we're called to do is yes. sharpen each other's tools. Yes. So when we say quality people, we're talking about people who are serious, people who are sincere mm -hmm. about life people who have focus, people mm. who have passion, and people who have discovered their purpose. We all have purpose, and we have to discover that purpose. So uh, you, had you done that trip on your own that day, that might have been the end of your trip, your bicycle. That's right. Yeah, yeah, day one, it would have been the end. Yeah, yeah, but because you surround yourself with, with Reed, mm -hmm. who was focused, yep. who was serious and sincere, That's right. he made the difference in your life. Thank God for that. Thank Amen. God for that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here today talking about You're this right. coast to coast That's trip true. that you made. So, so listen, our time is about up, uh, but I want to, again, say thank you, uh, Pastor Brian, for Amen. coming and, uh, and carrying in our hearts. And we're excited about the book. We're excited. Thank you. you, 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 you again, if you're just listening, uh, his book is in editing stages now. It's, it's about to be finalized and some sort of mid to latter part of summer. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be hearing about a book party. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be signing books along Absolutely. the way, and uh, it's going to be a great time. We're, we're, we're excited for that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you didn't hear on the first broadcast, I want you to hear on this broadcast. 
uh, all of the proceeds from the book, Pastor Brian has committed, he has dedicated, he has allocated every cent to go to the building fund right. of Clearbrook Baptist Church. That's right. So you will not benefit from one dime. Not, not one dime, yeah. I put all the work in and done all the administrative stuff, but yeah, all the money's going towards towards the church. So just be praying that God would use this as a tool to raise more money for our building fund. Okay, good, good. And again, you know, we, we solicit your prayers, we solicit your, your contributions, your dedications. And I got just a minute left, and I'll just give it to you for free. Won't charge you anything for this <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, but there's one more thing that you're going to have to do if you're going to be successful, and that is simply this. You're going to have to dream again. Amen. You know, the, the Joel 2, Acts 2, mm -hmm. they both talk about vision and dreams. It mm -hmm. says, uh, uh, in fact, I, I have it here. He says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. We have to be willing to dream. Mm. Uh, if, if we're just daydreaming, then our dreams equate to nightmares. Wow. But when we are dreaming with vision, when we are dreaming in God, Everything that we dream, I, and I'll say this, I'll say this, and I, I feel myself getting on my soapbox here, but, but I'll say this, when God orchestrates a vision, when God implants a dream, it's not because Brian thought that he could drive across the country. Mm -hmm. It's not because Brian thought he could pastor, Brian thought he could build a church. No, it's because God put that dream in mm -hmm. Brian's heart. Amen. And when God places a dream in your heart, then God is already telling you, just like he did, I read it in the first uh, uh, broadcast, I won't read it again, but you look at Joshua 1 and 8. God told Joshua, this is what I want you to do. He says, meditate on the word, don't let it depart from your mouth, that you would, do, do, that you would be able to do good. And then he says this, he says, and then you, Joshua, you will make your way prosperous. Mm. And when you dream big in God, you are saying, God, I want to bring into fruition. I want to bring into manifestation the vision that you have placed in my heart. Mm. You don't think the thoughts that you think, think on your own family. If it's of God, then those thoughts come from God. Mm. So God says, I'm giving you the ability. I'm giving you the anointing. I'm giving you the assignment to dream again. Wow. So I challenge you, I encourage you today to dream again. Maybe your journey, your, 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 your biggest feat may not be riding a bicycle from coast to coast. Mm. Maybe yours is not to build a church or to become a pastor of a great ministry. But whatever your dream is, I'm here to tell you that with God, it's possible. Amen. It's possible. I like what you said. Mm. Failure is not final. Mm -hmm. If you've fallen down, get back up again. Amen. A just man falls seven times. You may fall 70 times. You mm -hmm. may fall 17 times. But as long as you get up one more time, then failure is not final. Wow. Pastor Brian, thank you. You've been a blessing to me. I so Likewise. appreciate you. And I know that mm -hmm. God's hand is on your life. Amen. And I know that God's going to do great things, even greater things through your, through your life, through your ministry. Mm -hmm. And we, we thank God for being able to call you friend. And Amen. we just look forward to the, the book release, the book party. And I certainly want to be around you. I want to be informed uh, because I've discovered if I can hang around quality people, mm -hmm. then people may mistake me as being one myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like it. So thank you again, family. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you so very much uh, for, for allowing us to come today and share with you this good news. This is great news. I'm just excited to see what God is doing through this young man, through the ministry of Clearbrook Baptist Church. Continue to pray for them. Continue to lift them up as we pray for one another because I know that we all, the, the, the scripture says that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. So if you pray for me and I pray for you, we all pray together for one another there is nothing that we cannot do together because we have victory in Jesus.